Rainbow Six Siege's terrorist hunt is currently mostly used as either a way to warm up or practice certain operators and their guns. For both of these functions, terrorist hunt could have a lot changed that would aid the player base using terrorist hunt in these ways. In order to improve the experience for both practicing certain operators and warming up, the easiest solution that I can see is to add in multiple gameplay options. These would allow players to turn up, turn down, or even turn off completely aspects of the particular terrorist hunt mission that they are playing. These aspects that would be tweakable would include the number of enemies or even whether enemies exist at all in that particular mission, ammo counts, gadget counts, AI behavior perhaps, whether or not bomb terrorists spawn, whether or not the C4 spawns, and by C4 I mean the random rooms full of C4 or the C4s that are hidden across the map and sometimes just randomly kill you if you don't notice them, uh, whether barbed wire spawns, round timers, and so on and so forth. The point of all this customization would be so that players could fine-tune a terrorist hunt mission to be actually useful for practicing whatever specific thing they want to practice is, or smooth out whatever warm-up they want to do before hitting up actual multiplayer. For example, if you wanted to simply warm up your hands and get in the zone for some real matches, you might not want to deal with the often annoying C4 dotted around the terrorist hunt maps in which case you would disable that option. You might also simply not want to deal with finding routes around corridors full of barbed wire, in which case you would disable that option as well. Lastly, if you really wanted to pare the warm-up down to bare basics, you might even disable the spawning of the bomb dudes. All of these tweaks would tailor that terrorist hunt mission to better suit your purpose as a player playing the mode. If, instead, you wanted to learn a certain operator, such as Valkyrie, maybe you would choose to disable all enemy spawns and increase the gadget count, and that would allow you to run around the map, throwing cameras and seeing whether or not you've found a good position or not. The point is, depending on what you play solo games and Terrorist Hunt 4, you could directly personalize your mission and therefore directly improve your experience in-game. Clearly, there would be obvious exploitable issues with this customizable system, such as renown or even experience farming. Regarding this particular issue, I would argue that simply disabling renown and experience gain completely, if the default terrorist hunt and solo game experience is altered in any way, would be a pretty complete solution. If you want to play terrorist hunt to gain renown, which in my personal opinion is a bit of a waste of time, then you'll have to make do with the original mission formulas. In my personal experience, I've actually set up custom games in order to practice throwing Valkyrie cameras into awkward spots on certain maps. This was about as painful an experience as it sounds, as not only did I have only three cameras to throw each round, but each attack around I would have to pick an operator who could easily kill themselves in order to get back to defense where I was throwing, once again, a measly three cameras. This experience wasn't fast, it wasn't fun, and to this day I'm unsure as to whether or not it was actually worth the time I spent doing it. You know what would have improved this whole procedure? Customizable terrorist hunt or solo games. Another feature outside of the whole customizable suite of options that would help improve the experience would be a reset option that respawns in any enemies killed. This would be useful for a number of different purposes, but in essence, what it would do is save a lot of time. If you're playing a bit of terrorist hunt to practice a rifle, with, say, particularly awkward recoil, like a lot of people don't like the uh, C8 recoil for buck, or you're simply warming up before hitting up multiplayer, you don't really want to end the mission, wait for a new one to be generated, and then again, wait to spawn in just so that you can continue with what you were doing. In all honesty, the whole post-mission sequence of Terrorist Hunt, where the kill cam happens, that sometimes looks a bit dodgy, then your points are counted up that don't really matter, and then renown is given or it isn't, all of that takes a pretty obscene amount of time. Therefore, maybe a follow-up to increased customizable options would be the option to skip all end-mission stuff and just instantly restart 
with either a new mission on a new map, or the exact same mission with the same selected settings as before. Now, clearly these changes would only provide more functionality to Terrorist Hunt and solo games, and therefore, it can be argued, are pretty much a straight-up improvement to Siege. But, Siege has stability issues. I think we all know this. How many times have glitches been caused by deployable shields, for example? How many game-breaking bugs have been exploited in the past? And how many different hacks have been employed? Sadly. It has to be highlighted just how messed up Siege is regarding its stability, and I assume it's due to simply how it's been coded and created. Maybe, if you add in the option to enable infinite gadgets or ammo in Terrorist Hunt, people will find a way to use these options in multiplayer, which, needless to say, would be game-breaking. Infinite impact grenade spam, infinite nitro spam, 10 Valkyrie cameras, the list really can go on. Perhaps the reason why these options and improvements have yet to be added to Terrorist Hunt is that the devs are worried about the exploitable potential they contain. As hilarious as playing against 5 Tachanka LMGs would be, balanced and fair it would be not. Maybe the game is simply too unstable and unpredictable to have this kind of power available to the players who, sad to say, a small percentage of which have so far proven to be fairly untrustworthy when it comes to using cheats and glitches. I hope this is not the case, as if it is, it really will limit how much Ubisoft can do with their own game without needing to worry about introducing further game-breaking issues. Still, we can definitely dream. I for one hope that Terrorist Hunt receives some love in the future, as at the moment it's only a bare-bones shadow of what it eventually could be. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.